Welcome to January's Liquid Challenge. Today's problem is path with minimum effort. You are a hiker preparing for an upcoming hike. You are given heights, a 2D array of size rows times columns, where heights row column represents the height of that cell. You are situated in the top left cell, and you hope to travel to the bottom right cell. You can move up, down, left, or right, and you wish to find a route that requires the minimum effort. Now, a route's effort is the maximum absolute difference in heights between two consecutive cells of the route return the minimum effort required to travel from the top left to the bottom right. Here with this example, you could see the route's effort is going to be 2 because the maximum height difference is 2 for the entire path. It's not a summation, it's the maximum one between every single one. If we go like this path, we can find that the difference is 1 and the max is still 1, but here when we go to 2 to 5, it increases to 3. So this path is actually better. Now, Initially, you might think with these 2D problems, we could do like a dynamic programming solution. But the issue with that is you can move up, down, left, or right. So while it's easy to find the maximum difference in a DP array for like the top row and the first column, it'd be hard to figure out a way to do it for all everything in the middle, considering that you could move from the top, from the bottom, from the right, and the left. Uh, so that's going to be difficult. What other solutions can we try? Uh, well, if you look at the hints here, they ask you to consider the grid as a graph where the adjacent cells have an edge with the difference between the height um, of the cells. So, okay, well, that doesn't really tell us much, but um, say that we are given some sort of threshold k. Now, k is going to be some max effort that we include, and we want to check to see with this k, can we get to the top left to the bottom right? And to traverse that, we can just do a depth first search and follow like Dijkstra's algorithm, keeping track of anything that we visited and just check to see, well, it doesn't matter what the most efficient path is, just can we get to the bottom right at, that, at this threshold? And if we can, then why don't we do a binary search with this K value? Because we know what, what the bounds are. We know that the minimum is gonna be zero and we know the max is gonna be whatever the greatest height within these cells is. So knowing that as our bounds from the left to the right, why don't we do a binary search um, using some sort of depth first search to calculate what's the minimum, absolute minimum K that we can use uh, to get to the bottom right. All right, so if you wanna go with that approach, let's first initialize some variables as well as the direction. Then I'm going to write some sort of depth first search uh, with a threshold k input, inputting, as well as passing in a visited set to check whether we've uh, been able to hit the bottom right. Uh, after that, we can do the binary search here and check to see what's the minimum k that we do, what we can calculate. And once we do that, we just return that um, maximum because that's going to be the minimum k that we can use. All right, so let's first initialize some variables. We'll start with the MNN which would be the length of heights, as well as the length of heights, zero. Now, I want to initialize this directions just so that we could easily uh, go up, down, left, or right. And to do that, I can just make these tuples. This would be for right, this would be for the left. And we'll make sure to do it for the up and down as well. So this would be zero, one, zero, negative one. Okay, so now we need to have some sort of depth for search. And what I'm going to do is pass in a K, that's the threshold, as well as the X and Y. And what this is going to allow us to do is um, do a recursive function to see if we can get to the bottom right here. So very first thing we want to do is add to our visited set. I'm going to add that, create that somewhere, uh, the X and Y. And we want to move for all directions that we can. So dx and dy in directions. We're going to calculate a new x and new y. x plus dx and y plus dy. And as long as this new x and new y is in bounds and we haven't visited, then we could try to continue our depth of search. And um, we want to make sure that the absolute difference is less than or equal to k. Otherwise, we should we can't continue our depth of search. We can't because obviously that threshold has been passed. Okay, so if the new x is in bounds, we'll say new greater or equal to um, 
M and it's also in bounds here with the new I and new X, new Y, not in visited. If this is the case, let's calculate our new K, which is going to be equal to the absolute difference of heights x, y minus heights of new x and new y. Okay, now if this new k is less than our threshold or less or equal to our threshold, then continue our algorithm. Pass in the same k, but we'll pass in the new x and the new y. And that will be our function to check each time if the k is possible. Now, notice that we are not returning anything here, so what we'll have to do is keep track of this visited set and check to see if we visited the bottom right to see if we've been able to complete it. All right, so now we want to do our binary search. Um, let's first calculate our min and max bounds. And the min, it, or the min, yeah, the min, we're going to set that to negative one. And the max, we need to get the max height within all our all our cells. Uh, so to do that, I think I'll just do a list comprehension. I'll say four, let's say row in range of M and four column in range of N. Get the heights. And this will be a list and we'll just get the maximum. That's gonna be our max bound here. All right, now we want to do our binary search. So um, while mn is less than mx, and I'm going to add one here to make sure that we don't ever return a negative one. Uh, first, we'll calculate the mid, which is going to be just mn plus mx divided by two. And now we want to run our depth first search. So we have that function. Well, first, let's um, initialize this, reinitialize our visit set, because each time we're doing it, we're like starting over. Put that for search with the k, which is going to be our mid, and the x and y, which will start at 0, 0. So if we've been able to find that we've reached the end, so uh, let's see, m minus 1 and n minus 1, if, if this is if in visited, that means we've been able to complete it. So if we're able to complete it, then I suppose we want to check to see if we can lower it, right? Because we want to see what's the minimum effort required here. So to do that, we will uh, set our max to the mid. Otherwise, if we can't finish it, then let's try increasing our uh, min to the mid. Finally, once this algorithm is over, we can just return our max because that should be the minimum effort required. Okay, so sets has no attribute. What? Oh, set. This is add. Not sure why I did that. Okay, that looks like it's working, so let's submit it. And there we go, accepted. So this is, well, let's think. The depth first search here, because of our visit set, is going to uh, be a max of mn, m times n. But we're going to run it couple times here uh, because it's a binary search and our max is going to be the height max height it's going to be log of the max height so m times n times log of height now there is one other approach you could take it's pretty similar but instead of doing our recursive thing here what about if we tried using a heap now what we could do by um, setting it as a heap is sort that heap by the minimum threshold that we've been able to calculate so for instance we could uh, start off here and try traversing to the bottom and right and add whatever threshold uh, the minimum difference back into the heap so here we can see like one is going to be the minimum so that's going to be at the top of our heap and we'll continue down that path until we find that we add this one three is going to get in our heap well two is actually less than that right so we kind of go back uh, because this heap is always going to pop off the minimum one we kind of go back here and see uh, if this is actually the minimum and once we hit the end that's actually going to guarantee that that's going to be the minimum one. Um, and if we find, like, for instance, oh, okay, we should try going two back here, but we find that it's greater, then we'll go back to the minimum here 
and and that's going to be end up being the minimum path. So it's almost like backtracking without the whole recursive stack. We'll be using a heap instead. All right, so let's see if we can do that. Um, I'm just going to comment this out because I might copy paste some stuff here. Um, to do this, let's start with initializing our output. That's going to be zero, as well as a heap. And the heap is going to be uh, a tuple of three values. It's going to be the uh, threshold, minimum threshold, as well as the x and y. And we start with zero, zero for all those. So while there's a heap, what do we want to do? OK, well, we first want to pop off um, whatever is on top of our heap, right? So to, we'll get our k, our x, and y. And this will be popped off of our heap. Now we want to check all four directions. So for dx, dy in directions, let's calculate our new x and new y. Which is going to equal to x plus dx and y plus dy. And we want to check to see if this is inbounds and if we've visited this before. And because we're doing this in a heap, we can just set that visited set here. And we'll add visit set every time we pop it off. So visited would just be a tuple of x and y. So if this would be the same as right here. Oops. If this is the case, um, then we need to calculate our new threshold or the threshold, whatever it is, from this x to the new x, new i, and then we'll add that to our heap. So the new k is going to be equal to absolute difference of okay, that's going to be same as this. Um, but instead of having this like if like greater than threshold like continue whatever, we'll just add it automatically to our heap. So heap push to our heap a tuple of the new k as well as the new x and the new y. Now one thing to note is we need to store our k. So that's going to be equal to what? Output equals max of output and k. Yeah, and every time we find that something's greater, that's going to get pushed to the bottom or the heap or the middle of the heap or whatever. Whatever gets popped off here is always going to be the lowest k. So whatever we return at the end, uh, we should return the minimum height required. So our output. Uh, one thing to note, though, um, yeah, we don't return it here, actually. We return it once we've finished our algorithm, right? So um, I guess we can do that here. We'll say if x, y is equal to m minus 1, n minus 1, that means we finished, then we turn the outputs. Otherwise, if we're able to come out of this heap, or yeah, of this loop, then we should return something. But technically, this shouldn't happen, because there should always be a path all the way to the end. Um, so that shouldn't happen, but just in case, we'll just put that in there. Now, let me see if I forgot anything. Uh, it's totally possible. It looks like it's working, but submit that. Okay, accepted. That's great. So this is an m times n, but instead of log h, this would be a log of m times n, uh, because we don't. That's the worst case scenario. If, if we traverse every single path and keep backtracking all the way to the end, at the end of the day, because we are getting the minimum threshold, uh, it should technically be log of m times n. All right. So it's a pretty difficult problem, but hopefully that explained or helped. So thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.